neurosteroids, compounds that are made in our brain with a very simple function. They contribute to a balanced communication between our brain cells, neurons. But why are neurosteroids of such great interest to the neuroscience community? If you're interested in finding out, keep watching. Not only do neurosteroids contribute to a healthy brain function, but they are also very promising therapeutics for the treatment of anxiety. Therefore, over the last 20 years, neuroscientists have been trying to understand the mechanisms by which neurosteroids mediate their effect. But before we become Sherlock Holmes ourselves and start performing specific experiments that will help us investigate neurosteroid interactions in our brain, let me first introduce you to some of the key mechanisms of neuronal communication. Neurons communicate with each other by sending and receiving diverse types of signals. And it is the balance between two types of signaling, neuron inhibition and neuron excitation that is key for a healthy brain function. Let's look closer at the molecules that are involved in neuron inhibition by zooming in on a cell membrane of a neuron. One of the key mediators of inhibitory signaling is a molecule called GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. When this molecule binds to its target protein, GABA-A receptor, this interaction allows the receptor to open and transmit the signal in the form of chloride ions down the neuron. But there are also other molecules that can modulate the opening of GABA-A receptors and increase the amount of signal transmission, such as neurosteroids, the compounds I'm interested in as part of my research project. Where do neurosteroids bind within their target proteins, GABA-A receptors? To be honest with you, we're still not quite sure. But that's where my project fits in. What I'm doing is that I'm using this novel neurosteroid as a research tool to investigate the binding sites of neurosteroids on their target protein, GABA-A receptor. Now, let's have a look at some of the experimental work that can be done to help us understand the interactions between neurosteroids and their target partners, GABA-A receptors. Our investigation starts with preparing DNA, the genetic material for our target protein, GABA-A receptor. We also introduce mutations into the DNA of the GABA-A receptor at sites where we think neurosteroids bind. And with the help of bacteria, we can produce high amounts of DNA, healthy or mutated, which we can then add to our cells. Here I'm using human embryonic kidney cells which are commonly used in research because of their ability to uptake genetic material, such as the GABA-A receptor. Our next step involves preparing thin glass electrodes, which are a key component of the so-called whole cell patch cam electrophysiology. In this method, cells expressing GABA-A receptors are put in a bath solution rich in nutrients which is part of the electrophysiology microscope. The electrode is filled with a solution that mimics the inside of the cell. The cell comes into contact with the electrode and this attachment allows us to detect and compare changes in the activity of healthy or mutated GABA-A receptors in response to the neurosteroid. I am hoping that my experiments will shed a new light on our understanding of neurosteroid interactions with GABA-A receptors, which can help us optimize the development of novel neurosteroid therapeutics and offer individuals with anxiety a more precise treatment approach. <laughs>